How to build a black gauge sweet pea 5 inch gauge locomotive. Part 69. Using a Bernard collet chuck with the first piston blank fitted to the piston rod that was originally discarded. I am doing this to machine the piston thickness. This method of making the new pistons I am personally not happy with. I would rather have used a much longer piece of cast iron, reduced its diameter to just above what I need, then while it was still in the chuck I would have threaded the individual sections before parting them off. This is one of the original pistons that I machined as a washer. I also drilled the middle of it so it fitted onto the piston rod. This is the piston rod that was a bit too short and it's fine for the roofing operations. I'll be using the piston rod that I made with a centre drilled in the end for turning the final outside diameter of the piston blank. Here you can see the arrangement. I'm using a life centre just to apply some pressure to the piston to keep it in place. What you're about to see, apart from the final ones, are rough cuts. I need to make this piston the correct thickness. I'll mark it with a felt tip pen as a rough guide, just to show you how much metal I have to remove. When you're doing a job like this, you have to remember that you're turning something quite large that's held in the chuck by a quarter of an inch diameter piston rod, so you need to take gentle cuts. I'm using a carbide tipped knife tool, but I've just sharpened it using my green grit wheel, so it's in good condition. When turning cast iron, don't go too mad with the speed. Keep the speed fairly low. I can't really give you the speed, it depends on the size and physical strength of your lathe and how much it moves about when you're turning. In this shot, the entire assembly isn't looking too good really. When I finish this first piston, I will try it in the engine, and if it fits okay, then all's well. But if it doesn't, I will make new pistons using my method of a longer piece of cast iron. Which, by the way, is a lot quicker than doing it like this. I would like to show both options, and you can judge for yourself which is the better method. I'll contact Blackgates and get them to send me a nice piece of cast iron that's long enough to make both pistons in one go. For the final reduction in the thickness of the piston, I'm running the lathe at a higher speed. If you look at the lines in the work, you can actually see the history of the cuts. Once I've finished these longitudinal cuts, I will then take a facing cut across the front, and theoretically, the piston should be the right thickness, and hopefully square. I don't mean square as in not round, I mean square as in the angle of the front face that I'm machining relative to the longitudinal section of the piston. Here goes the last bit and the piston is nearly the size that I want it. In this clip it doesn't look too accurate but I'll review the situation later once I've faced across the front of the piston. One particularly good thing about using this smart and brown lathe is that I don't have to endlessly wind the top slide handle. It has an auto traverse both longitudinally and transversely. The top slide moves all by itself, as if by magic, owing to a gearbox system within the saddle. My other lathes don't have such a thing, so I do a lot of handle winding. But really, you can get good results by winding handles. You learn how to wind the handle continuously, and you can, of course, get a really good finish. I'm not too much into handle winding at the moment because I've got a bad back, it's very painful. Too many years of lifting heavy Hammond organs in and out of vans, I think. And now, at 72, it's really catching up with me. But one has to suffer for one's art, darling, as the famous show business saying goes. But at the moment, that's not making my back feel any better. It's very painful indeed. For this last part, I'm increasing the speed of the video just to get through it in a reasonable time. Nearly there now, just another couple of cuts and it's finished. I'm taking a measurement of the original piston because this is really what I need to duplicate. And you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once? Well here I'm measuring for a second time. To be honest though, I'm really not bothered if this job goes wrong because I think it's the most stupid way to make two pistons I can think of. And now for the important part, I used the scrap piston rod which was too short for the rough cutting of the piston thickness only. 
You are about to see the new piston rod which has an accurate centre hole drilled in it for turning the finished piston blank diameter. Here's a close up of it screwed in place and as you can see it just protrudes ever so slightly. This was the plan. I fitted the original piston washer and all I have to do now is insert the piston rod and once it's pushed all the way into the collet chuck I can then tighten it. It's very important to really tighten it so it can't slip. The good thing about the design of these multi-size collets is they have six jaws and you can hold round and hexagon bar stock. It really is a great tool. When I look at this job, the piston isn't looking as accurate as I thought it would do, but it should be okay when it's turned. It was never accurate as it left the three jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe because I had to turn this piston blank from both ends, which meant removing it from the chuck, which is never a good idea with a standard three jaw chuck and that is why it's not looking very accurate. Once I've machined this piston to the finished diameter I can remove it from the collet chuck whenever I want and refit it. That's why collet chucks are so good for turning axles and such like for model locomotives. That's it according to my micrometer this piston is now one and a half inches in diameter. I'm just cleaning it up very gently with some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper. And that's it for the first piston, I will try it in the cylinder. Once I know that both pistons are a good fit in their respective cylinders, I'll put them back in the collet chuck and turn the grooves. But that's it for this episode, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.